Hey guys, thank you so much for stopping by. My name is Chantal. I'm a daycare owner and a mom to four. In today's video, I'm actually going to walk you through five tips on how to make nap time comfortable for your toddlers. If you would like to see how I set up for nap time and you would like to see my nap routine, then you may want to stick around for this video. Okay guys, so I'm actually gonna walk you through my nap routine. I'm gonna give you some tips on what works for me. Maybe that's something you can use towards your nap routine. So in my current program, I have children from ages 12 months to three and a half years old. So depending on your age group, uh, nap time may be a little longer or maybe a little less. But for me, it's usually from 12.30 to three. Now why is it that long? So the first tip is giving them 30 minutes to wind down and get comfortable. That way they're on their cots and ready to go. So from 12.30 to one, that's the amount of time Time that it usually takes it depends actually some kids nap within 10 minutes and then others nap within 30 minutes so it just all depends but from one to three all the kids are napping and you know every child is so different some kids wake up before three o'clock like I have one that wakes up at 2 30 as long as they are within that time frame then it's fine depending on the child but the older they get I feel like it just gets a little difficult because they are getting to that age where they just don't need a nap. But as stated in my policy, parents know that every child needs to nap. Or if they aren't used to taking a nap, then they use that time for quiet time where they would have to sit on their cots or lie on their cots quietly because the other kids are still napping. So tip number one would be to give yourself 30 minutes for that child to slowly transition into nap time. So my second tip is to make sure they had a good lunch. So our lunch is usually from 11.15 to 12, depending, some take a little longer to eat than others. So from 11.15 to 12 is usually our lunch. And um, I make sure that, you know, the kids are like well fed and if they want more, there's always more to give. Like I'm not really stingy when it comes to food, uh, especially before nap time because you want them to nap for the whole night. After that is usually diaper changes and story time. So I feel like Story time helps so much as well. There are days that we don't, we just go straight to nap. Depends on the day, but usually we do sit down and we read a book as one teacher is uh, changing diapers, the other one is cleaning up, and the kids are all set up on their cots and ready to go. So that was my second tip, to make sure that your children are have a good lunch. That way you don't have to worry about any child waking up and crying in the middle of nap time and then waking up all the other kids. So tip number three is actually not accepting children after 9.30. So for me, I don't accept any kids after 9.30. It's stated in my policy and parents are fully aware of this uh, policy. So the reason why I have that in place is because sometimes parents uh, drop off their children like let's say 10 or 11 o'clock and uh, Sally woke up a little later than all the other kids here at daycare and she's not gonna nap during nap time. Or she had lunch at home and she's not gonna have lunch here and then she's not going to be able to nap the whole nap period so this is why I decided that you know what after 9 30 I'm not going to accept any kids because it throws off the entire routine so if you want to go ahead and give that a try because you've noticed that kids are coming a little later and they're not napping uh, at the time that they need to nap then you're more than welcome to make the change it's something that works for me and maybe it can work for you too Okay, so tip number four is asking mom and dad, how does your child nap at home? Some children need to be rocked, some need to be patted on the back, um, others need a bottle before nap. If a child just started daycare, obviously it's gonna take two to three weeks for that child to adjust. But what helps is asking parents what the routine is at home. Another thing, when a child is just enrolling, I ask mom and dad to mimic our nap schedule. So if their child is napping from 10 to 11, and that's not what we have on the nap schedule, I make sure that the parents are mimicking our schedule so I send them a copy of our schedule and two weeks before enrolling their child they make sure that they have the exact nap time and training their little one how to nap independently without uh, mom and dad rocking them or if they're co-sleeping with mom and dad these are a few tips
tips that I give the parents before enrolling their child. I currently have five little ones in my program that drink milk before nap time. So if they're starting off, there's the first two, three weeks, uh, if they are taking a bottle at home, I totally, uh, it's, it's fine, like I, I let it go. Uh, once they hit that three week mark, I let parents know that we have to transition now into a sippy cup. So all my kids are currently drinking from a sippy cup. So they drink their milk in a sippy cup on their cots 15 minutes before nap time. So I'm sure once you ask mom and dad if the child is used to drinking a bottle or a pacifier or has a, a lovey or a blanket that they're attached to, definitely will help your nap time be a lot smoother and comfortable for your toddler. Okay, so tip number five is to lay them on the same spot every single day. Especially if you have a child that's coming into your program, is not familiar with the, with the environment, different teachers, different food, there's so many changes for that child. You may want to stick with uh, picking a spot in your play area or in your uh, daycare that is um, going to be their designated nap spot. So I find that this works. After we change their diapers, they know exactly where their cots are because it's in the same spot all the time and they just sit on their cot and wait for uh, their milk. So I do have a bonus tip for you today and that is something that I could not live without during nap time. It helps the kids nap within 10 to 15 minutes, okay? Are you ready? That's exactly what we play for the entire nap period. So if you have a TV or Bluetooth speaker lingering around, then you may want to use that to set up your ocean waves or your rain sound. So I have it running for the entire nap period. You'd be surprised. It actually works. I get compliments all the time from parents wondering like, oh, my child never naps. How do you get him to nap? And it's honestly because of the ocean waves and the rain sound. Okay, so as one of the teachers is changing diapers, I just go on the iPad here and uh, I go on YouTube and I search up um, calm, rain, calm rain sounds for sleeping. And as you can see, there's so many options and you pick which, whichever one works best for you so for me i'm actually going to pick the white nose rainstorm i love this one and it automatically plays on my tv so my parents actually provide uh, a fitted sheet, a blanket, or a sleeping bag for the little ones to have here. And um, that's, we usually get it on Monday and I send it home on Friday. The next day they're in, they would have to bring a clean fitted sheet and blanket for their child. So instead of buying the cot covers that you would find on Amazon, you can actually just put a fitted crib sheet over the cot and uh, yeah. It saves you some money so if you have any lingering around from your little ones or um, even if the parents if you get the parents to bring a uh, fitted sheet when they bring their blankets then that's also a good way to save some money there okay so now I'm going to show you how I set up for nap time okay guys so I quickly want to show you how I set up for nap with the cots here in the main play area so this is the main play area where we set up for nap time now don't mind the Halloween decorations we just had a Halloween party Okay, so I make sure every child has their own spot and they're separated from one another. That way they're not interacting with one another during nap time or they're distracting each other. So some have like sleeping bags and others have like the fitted uh, crib sheet with the blanket. So this is what I was talking about. The fitted sheet the crib fitted sheet actually fits perfectly on a cot. Usually all the play pens or pack and plays are lined up, but in this case, because it's nap time, we pull out the play pen right here, we pull it out, and that way every child is separate and is not distracting one another. So I was able to give you five tips today and a bonus tip on how you can make nap time comfortable for your toddlers. If you really enjoyed this video and would like to see more daycare related videos, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe down below. Also click on the notification bell so you'll be notified when the next video is out. Thank you so much for watching. If you would like to see a detailed tour of my daycare, please check out this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!